Welcome back to another episode of So Unprofessional. Yeah. Yeah, you see that ring behind us, right? Yeah, if you want all this smoke, I will fuck you up. I'm tired, I'm about to get Listen, man, all hands. got the cameras and everything. Listen, I'm just saying this. It's all hands and feet, man. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm gonna need some hair gear, though, because I ain't trying yeah. to mess up my pretty. I mean, you ain't gonna hit me, but just in case. Yo, you know I'm gonna I mean? put you, you right might fight down. like a little girl. Nah, shit. I don't do none of that, that shit. That might not be politically correct. I don't do, I don't do none of that shit, man. Y'all. So, Mid- listen, man. Windmill shit? You know, like, you know, I hate the timestamp shit, but I got to. It's January 4th. You know what I mean? Tomorrow is the. Founders Day for the greatest fraternity known to man. Why do, why do I care? You why don't care. Care? care. But the people care because the people love the news of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. You know what I'm saying? Founded January 11th. I, I mean, that, January 5th, 1911. That hand rubbing shit you done? Nah, I mean, it's chill, bro. It, it, it's a secret society, man. If you <laughs> oh, that's my friend, bro, right there. Yo, to the noops, man. You know what I mean? It's, do you know? Do we, when, it's, when it's January, when it's close to January 5th, everybody know what it is, man. J5. So we oh, yeah. here was so uh, unprofessional, and we about to get this started on this evening, man. Let's go. All right. Yo, man, you hear about your bull? Who my bull? Kells. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. My mom's telling me no. I think that, uh, <laughs> I think I'm just at a place where, like, uh, I'm just feeling like, Lifetime trying to fuck Kells over. Like, I, I don't know what's this infatuation with ruining the career of R. Kelly, but they doing a good job of it, man. And Ru- uh, I mean, all they, they're just stating facts. You can, are you ruining someone's career just because you're stating facts? But I think when you state the facts, you got to state all the facts. You, get, you, you bringing up people, like, first of all, let me just be all the way clear. Like, R. Kelly transgressing with 13, 14-year-old girls I will never condone or co-sign that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But what I will say is, you know, when they start releasing the facts, like, how did he get a hold of these 13, 14 year old girls? Like the young girl that he that, that he pissed on. You know what I mean? Well, I that's think the his, niece. Uh, that, I bring him through. That's the niece of one of the same people who's on the Lifetime show talking bad about Kells. How did he get a hold of your niece? I know how he got a hold of your niece. You sent her to slaughter. How yeah, come, I mean, how, but that doesn't make what he did any better. No, it don't make it do what he be, any better. But people are accomplices to this. So it's almost so to me, it's like they was your co-defender and then they stood up and got a separate lawyer. And now they pointing the finger at you saying that you guilty. But they was a part of the fuckery. You know what I'm saying? All, the, all, all these young ladies, 21, 22 years old coming from poverty stricken backgrounds, desolate, destitute, well, poor I'm not, I'm conditions. Not even, I'm not even thinking about the 21s and the 22 uh, year olds. Yeah. They said when he was first coming up, uh-huh. he was going hanging out at the high school. Okay. Hanging out at the McDonald's across from the high school. Okay. Pulling up in his nice little uh, expedition. Okay. Popping out like All right. Mark Kelly. All right. And did his whole Pod Piper shit. I'm gonna be quite honest, just a little bit I'm desensitized to that because I remember being a freshman in high school and you walking up the way and 24, 25-year-old men was pulling up on high school sophomore chicks, high school junior chicks and pulling them. And we ain't, y- we ain't think that shit was right then. I mean, we ain't think it was right from a selfish standpoint. Like, damn, bro, <laughs> I wanted to fuck her. How can I compete? Like, you got this car with all these rims and all this money. And all I could give her is my time and laughter. You know what I'm saying? Buy we, a little candy bar at the machine. You know what I'm saying? Machine. We ain't really give a fuck about it to the point where like, yo, somebody should drop a dime on that nigga, B. You know what I mean? I don't like that shit. I don't, <laughs> I don't like, like that, that shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm drop a dime on them niggas. No, no, nobody felt like that. The chick's parent, the chick parent was with the shit. She met the dude. You no know, goddamn well, this dude was 25 years old, but he had a car with rims and was buying her sneakers and getting her hair done. And the mother was co-signing the shit. So I mean, the shit that the shit that messed me up about this now is that it was the norm. Parents was cool with it. You know, it was school officials who knew shit like this. Like, it, like I remember being in high school, going to a prom. Twenty-seven-year-old nigga was in the prom with his seventeen-year-old date. School officials knew that he graduated six years before this prom. 
Nobody, nobody mandated reporters. Nobody called who they were supposed to call. None, no, no, nothing went down to hold this man accountable. But now all of a sudden, R. Kelly is like the poster child for this shit. Like, I, you know. I mean, that's what happens. What they, what they say, the uh, roosters come home to, what's the, what's the saying? F- <laughs> chickens man, come home to roost. Chickens come home to roost. I'm being all the way real, man. That shit, I mean, look, you put that shit out there, Sooner or later, that shit catches I up. I feel like a lot of this shit is just based around money. Like somehow or another, somebody tried that. This my. This is the Barksdale. Y'all, you know, make sure y'all put this on the screen. This is with in quotations the Barksdale conspiracy theory. Yeah, T, put that shit up there because he's always saying? putting up fucking throwbacks of like Wakanda shirt and yeah. shit like that. This is what I really think. I think that somebody tried to extort R. Kelly for some monies. R. Kelly was like, fuck you, suck my dick. And they went through these measures to ruin R. Kelly because R. Kelly did not comply with the extortion. It's, it's funny because I only watched the first episode of the Lifetime documentary. Mm-hmm. But his brother's the most vocal one. Judas <laughs> motherfucking Cain and Abel. My thing is, why, why didn't you say anything while he was actually- While it was happening. When y'all motherfuckers saw him take that 14 year old girl into his fucking sin den, you know what I mean, his sin shed, and do all that bullshit to her, why y'all didn't call the cops then? Because oh. I'm gonna keep it real, you my man, Gus, and in another life, if I saw you take a 14 year old girl into your fucking den of shame, <laughs> I'm gonna fuck you up and get her out of there. Well, it's funny because uh, they actually had one of the backup singers on there. Yeah. She was giving a, a, a story about they were all on a tour bus and, you know, they got the bunks and everything. They, you know, they got the little bunks they sleep in. And then, you know, the back room is for, I guess, R. Kelly. Mm-hmm. So at one time they was playing some pranks or some shit and the door flew open and uh, he was in there knocking the Leah off. And, uh, well, I guess you call raping the Leah. So uh, the problem I have with the story is the chick's telling the story now. But when it happened, this you bus full of people didn't do anything. You did nothing. So now if we talking all this shit in retrospect, like the, the roosters coming home to roost or whatever the <laughs> fuck that statement is. Chickens come home to roost. Just remember this shit. When Sandusky went down for raping, so did everybody who turned a blind eye to it. So all you motherfuckers that was on that bus that saying R. Kelly was raping his wife, how crazy does that sound? I think that was before him. At the end of the day, the parents allowed him to marry her. No, actually, the dude that actually, uh, I don't know, I think it was like one of his road managers or whatever, actually lied on, the parents weren't there. So. And they lied on the marriage certificate saying that she was actually 18. Who lied on the marriage certificate? Uh, The road manager forged the document. I I think that's a lie. I think that's a lie. I think the parents were well knowledgeable that R. Kelly was marrying their daughter. I think they were well knowledgeable. Well, even if they did, they'll make none of the shit right. I mean, but it's more people held accountable. I Come mean, on, I, man. I agree everybody should be held accountable. That's what I'm saying. So we ain't going to just go at the Pied Piper without going at all his minions that helped it happen. I, that, that's just how I feel. You know what I'm saying? And if you're gonna go at R. Kelly, God damn it, y'all better dig up Hugh Hefner and lock his ass up too. Fuck that. How many underage girls was Hugh Hefner getting dick sucks from? How many underage girls he had living in the Playboy Mansion, feeding them Zannies and Coke so they could fuck at the, at the Playboy parties? And he, been doing, about and he been doing that shit since 1960. Nah, but I'm talking about it because you about to, you, they, they are tarnishing the image again using our own people again to tarnish the image of one of our musical legends. Meanwhile, the godfather of pornography been fucking 13 and 14 year old girls since the dumbass magazine came out. But just cause them over there allow that shit to happen in their community, don't mean we gotta let this shit happen in our community. Don't make that shit right. He's being held by the laws. He's being held to the laws created by them over there but, but them that, are in power, so that's what happens. So, so this is what I'm saying. So, people, what I'm saying, it's a double standard. Why isn't Hugh Hefner held to the same laws? 
because he's one of them. So why are we going against our own? Because he's still a nasty motherfucker. Bro, you sound like them dumb ass motherfuckers, bro. So I'm supposed to let him go? Be like, ah, it's cool. Well, no, what I'm supposed, what I'm saying is, you a father. If your daughter was ever in a situation with R. Kelly like that, before you call the cops, we ain't gonna talk about what you gonna do. We just gonna say oh, we'll calling the calling the police is <laughs> the last resort. So if you feel like R. Kelly wronged your family. Oh yeah, everybody in the studio that was there. That's what I'm everybody saying. On the bus that's that what was I'm there. saying. Motherfuckers threw them kids out to dry. If, if, if it was more than one 14-year-old girl, those parents hung those kids out to dry. R. Kelly paid all those settlement monies, and now y'all on Lifetime talking crazy about him. When you could have had him locked up. And they getting more money. You could have had him locked up in 1993 when it happened. Now you're going to wait to 2023 to, 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 get a, to have some heart. Man, get the fuck out of here, man. Well, they, fuck they didn't say anything back then because of the money. Now they, they saying it now because, but, for what, the money. But they, <laughs> fuck them. Fuck them. And He's still a nasty nigga. Okay. Do something when it happened. Can't call a nigga a bitch after he knock you out. You can. But he knocks you out. You can still call him a bitch. It won't, it won't hold yeah. no weight. Then that's, and that's what I'm saying right now. <laughs> it don't hold no weight. You can't call him a nasty <laughs> nigga 20 years after he paid you for fucking your child. Now, Look I, how I, crazy I, that sounds. I do feel bad buying that the... Look that how, best of both worlds, bro. Bootleg. Look how crazy that sound. You are calling him a nasty nigga 20 years after he fucked your child. He paid you for fucking your child. That's not, I know, I know you as in general, but don't point at me and say you. Yeah, hey, bro, I mean, you on their side. I'm, I, <laughs> I'm not on R. Kelly's side. I'm just on the side of true justice. True justice, you should have fucked R. Kelly up in 1996. If you gonna wait till 2016. He ain't got no hit records now. He got him. I mean, they all hit. He's records. still fucking filthy rich. Yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, fuck all those chicks that's complaining about R. Kelly. You should have complained in the 90s when it happened. Right now, clean your pussy, take a shower, get a job. Man, fuck R. Kelly. So we back. Yeah. With Mr. Malik Jackson. Yeah, man. Maybe he yeah. can help you. You know what I mean? Help me with what? Get your hands right, so you know. What I mean, yeah. next time you talk, slick yeah. To I thought me. I thought you was about to say some wild shit like help me get some bitches. Well, you, you might, I mean, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, happily one. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a one, yeah. I'm a, I'm a one woman man, man. Yeah. So I mean, you did need help getting bitches back in the day. I never. I mean, getting money. young women back in the day. Listen, bro. I used to get money. I had a will. I ain't need no help. I had a hotel on wheels, bro. Yeah, you, you can tell the people any story you want. I'm telling people the facts. I, mean, I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, they don't know. But anyway, you. anyway <laughs> I'm sitting here with a upcoming fitness and boxing guru, Philadelphia, Mr. Malik Jackson, man. Now, I mean, appreciate you coming on to Likewise. the show, boss, man. Likewise, man. So, tell us a little bit about yourself, bro. Tell, tell us about your history, how you got from your young age to now. Um... To make a short story shorter, you know, I fell in love with what I'm doing when, when I was locked up. Okay. Um, for those who don't know my story, I was locked up for 10 years from age 16 to 26. Mm -hmm. um, my current age is 32. Okay. So I've been home um, about five, six years. And this is what I've been doing, but it, I gave birth to it in the penitentiary. Mm -hmm. And I just stuck with it, man. I just stuck with it, and this is what it led me to. That's what's up. So you ever tried to do any boxing professionally? Yeah, so when I came home, my first goal, because I, I had wrote a whole bunch of goals for myself, mm -hmm. but my, my, my plan A and my plan B, my plan A was to be a, a professional boxer, and my plan B was to be a personal trainer. Okay. And I started practicing both of those when I was locked up, probably mm -hmm. like four years away from my uh, release date. Mm -hmm. And when I came home, and I really like saw the market, it wasn't no money. In per, uh, excuse me, it wasn't no money in, in boxing for me. Okay. So, at the same time I'm trying to, you know, train to be a professional boxer, I'm still training people on the side. Okay. At um, Johan Boxing Gym. Mm-hmm. And the money from personal training was just so good. Yeah. Compared to the money that I would have to wait to make in boxing at the age that I'm, I'm at. Yeah. And I'm just starting my life all over again. So I said, man, you know what? I'm going to do the training thing. Cool. Yeah. 
cool, cool. So you said in jail you wrote, you wrote down a whole bunch of goals. Right. I guess I think it, thinking about it, what separated you from the people that actually that set goals while they're incarcerated, and you actually came out and achieved some of those goals? The big difference was the discipline. Um, not only did I set the goals, I started working on them years before I was ever released. Mm -hmm. So I was doing the, doing the research, sitting down reading, getting up, working out, running. I used to solicit people in prison to train them. This is how I solicit people on the streets to train them now. The only difference is I wasn't getting paid for it back then. Okay. Now like, this is how I make a living. So um, my ambition is, is like, it, it, it runs high. Mm -hmm. If I want to do something, I have to do it. Like, I can't stop. Like, if I, if I sit down and read a book and I say, man, I want to read this whole chapter, the chapter can be a thousand pages. And if I go to sleep before reading it, I won't feel right. So I will sacrifice um, my comfort, my, my, comf my comfortability to, to reach uh, um, a goal that I set for myself, even if it's of a severe level. Is that something that came natural to you or something you had to work at? Both and both. Both and both. Um, a lot of personal development within myself. So I always had it in me, just like I believe everybody got those um, qualities in them. But I worked on them more, so I shrunk them. All right. So what's the end game? At the end of the day, where does Malik Jackson want to be in his field of endeavors? All over the world. French, uh, franchise the brand, mm -hmm. all major cities. Um, and me going out and just training people around the world. Mm -hmm. And me coming home and just visiting our gyms in the different cities and they being ran, ran by, you know, family and friends. Mm -hmm. So that's the end, um, my end vision. Would you ever think about training a boxer? Like if somebody just came in here, just had some talent that you thought could take him all away and all he needed was just a a disciplined trainer in his ear. Would you jump behind him and, 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 and ride the wave? I would give him a um I would, I would give him a high recommendation. Mm -hmm. I mean that's just me being honest with you. Um it ain't no money in it for me. It ain't no money in it for me. And I don't mean it in that type of way is that the work that I do, mm -hmm. I can't wait until you make fight it. three months from now to hopefully make a paycheck and yeah. then I get a percentage of that paycheck. Yeah. I can't no, that's not how I pay my bills. And it ain't my passion. I understand. Even though I'm a, I'm a fitness boxing trainer, I'm not a boxing trainer. Mm -hmm. So I don't really, I'll give you a high recommendation, yeah. but as far as me sitting down, putting work, work in with you to follow a career, no, but I, I'll do that for you if you try and get in shape. Understood. You know what I'm saying? So who's your favorite boxer? Just, just. Of all time or today? I guess all time and today. Come on, man. Um, Ali, of course, all time. Okay. Today. Um, Floyd. Floyd? Absolutely. Yeah. What you think about the young guys coming up, like, uh, what's his name, Shakur, then you got the young boy, Devontae, yeah. and uh, what's his name, Errol Spence, and, and, and uh, the twins, what's the twins' name? Charlo Brothers. Yeah. yeah. Like, what you think about those guys coming up? I think um, the fight game is, is, is pretty decent. The guys you just mentioned is talented. Mm. So I don't take nothing away from them. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot. Um, that they got to offer the game and the sport. Mm -hmm. And I hope that they go to a high level in their career. Pacquiao, bro. Pac-Man. I'm putting money on it too, if you want to. Uh, I, I, right. I bet a $5 on not tell nobody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> five dollars. Five dollars. I mean, you know, your fitness guru, man, that'll get them some, uh, some vegan. No, you know, we can bet five push-ups. I can't do five push-ups, bro. You can't do five push-ups? Nah, nah, unless I have to. Like if somebody knocked me down, I'm getting up five if a, times. If a bad five chick times. Came, if a bad chick yeah. came here and was like, "Yo, I give you some ass if you can do like ten push-ups." Oh, I'm gonna give her twenty push-ups. <laughs> twenty. <laughs> Motivation. That's it. And then use my last three minutes in the pussy. Well, we ain't gonna talk about that. Here, <laughs> one female man. <laughs> that too. See, that's what I'm saying. He trying to set me up. Hey, hey, you feel right yo, for it. Yo, yo, you a fuck, man. yo. See, that, that's, that's why we was fighting. That's why you got to I, 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 I lead you right into the, you, the right uppercut. You know what I mean? Nah, I'd have blocked it, bro. You no, can't you wouldn't. Lose. You can't lose if you block. It's all me it's so, mental. I think Deontay Wilder is ass. Wow. Really? Yeah. Why? Why? Explain. He don't block. 
Okay. <laughs> Partially, or, or he don't block at all? I watched him for at least 12 rounds block with his right eye. In one fight? Yeah. Was no, that last fight fights. with the shaky dude? All fights. Yeah. Like, out of every fight I've ever seen Deontay Wilder fight, I'm going to be honest, like, you know, I, 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 I'm not a master of the sweet science like right. you are. But I do know one thing. If I block, I'm not getting punched in the face. That's true. You know That's what true. I'm saying? And so I watched Deontay Wilder run up on people that's like his, this. That's probably his style. But the, the whole thing is, and I don't really disagree with you, mm -hmm. but the rule of thumb is learn the rules mm -hmm. and then break them. OK. Yeah. Or it's like he blocks with his shoulders. But he blocks. Yeah. But he moves. He don't block in a traditional fashion with his hands. But he blocks. He does. If you block with your eye, is that blocking? I'm just, I'm just asking. I want to eye blocking. Okay, solid. <laughs> <laughs> solid. Because now I'm start, I'm eye not blocking. gonna start blocking with my eye. But I just know, all right, if I get cracked in the eye. No, Wild is he, he, he's a great fighter though, man. He um very talented guy. Mm -hmm. Um, the heavyweight division is 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 exciting again. Yeah, Anthony Joshua. Yeah, he's monster. A monster. I would love to see them two together. They monsters. I'm doing six, I, seven, six, eight. I will say this though. Wilder surprised me because I didn't have Wilder being Ortiz. Ortiz could rumble. Why not? Because Ortiz could rumble. Now we know Wilder can rumble. No, Wilder, <laughs> Wilder could block with his face. He did enough to, the, 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 to beat him. <laughs> Yeah. That's all that matters. It don't matter how I won, just know I won. No, you play like, uh, what was that, what was it called, Fight Night? If Deontay Wilder was on Fight Night, his stamina would be like on 100. But, yeah, he a monster, man. But his blocking, <laughs> he could like, block the wind out of his face. Mm. All right, let's, let's take a second and get back to the money maker. Okay. The Malik Jackson fitness. So tell us a little bit about what you uh, do in your gym as far as uh, your fitness training. Um, we offer authentic fitness boxing trainer. Mm -hmm. um, emphasis on the authenticity aspect of it because when a person comes to you, you have to leave them with something in order for them to come back. So what I say is like, um, you give people something they always going to want, like a haircut, mm -hmm. make them feel good. Yeah. But when you, give them, when you give it to them, no, it don't last. So you got to find a way yeah. for them to keep on coming back. So like, what I give people, I, I, I give people um, self-esteem. Not that people don't got self-esteem, but it's a different when you, when you know how to defend yourself and you sure that you can defend yourself, is a feeling unlike no other, for real, for real. Is it like when you get your first gun? No. <laughs> It's like, it's like the first time, it's like if the bully keep cracking you and yeah. then it's one time you block it. No, so, so you walk different. Yeah. You walk different. You talk different. Mm -hmm. It's like I just gave you a pocket full of money when you leave me. So you walk, you walk, and you feeling, you feeling good. So Walking it, down the street like, yo, yeah. I can knock that nigga so, out. You know, <laughs> I can knock that nigga out. Authentic boxing training, high intensity, strength conditioning, cardio, mm -hmm. and a lot of fun in between it. You know, we, we have fun in here. We, we ain't really like... You know, draw surgeons and all that. I mean, but we had fun, and that's the um, type of environment that I created. Did you see Rocky IV? Loved it. Is it like Rocky IV, like when you went into the snow, like Drago? <laughs> like that? No. Because if so, sign me up. No. All right. No, I seen some of his last clients walk out here happy. Yeah, they, they seem happy. Now, um, do you have any tips for like someone who's currently sitting on a couch? and may not want to come out to the gym, but wants to get, a, get their health a little bit better? Like me? Well, yeah, well, I'm sorry with you eating. You ain't really got to um, hit the gym. You ain't really got to hit the gym. If you, if you got any insecurities or whatever, and if you was extremely overweight, I know you ain't really feel comfortable around people. Start with your eating, cut your diet, then you're going to shut it. And then start at home, do a little jumping jacks. You know, say I do 25 jumping jacks every night, then add some push-ups. They had some sit-ups, and that'll be your routine. A couple months later, when you drop down naturally, you're going to feel good about yourself, so you're going to want to go in the gym because you're going to need somebody else to take you to that next level. But, Coach, I don't want to diet. Uh, well, put a, uh, put a nice chick in front of you, might, it might change your mind. So you might need to diet with a nice chick in front of you. Mm. But remember, you know, just make sure the nice chick is your wife because, you know, we don't, we want woman men. Yeah. Well, I would hate for my wife to maul somebody. Yeah. 
somebody's daughter. Uh, I mean, not everybody can have a America's Next Top Model. I mean, I do at home, <laughs> but not everybody. This yeah. Gus gonna slap you for even saying that dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to get Malik to take the bait. He ain't take it. No, <laughs> no, I peeped it. <laughs> <laughs> but you ain't respond though. No, he ain't buying into that shit. He ain't buying into that shit. So, how is like the love in the city for what you're doing? Like, how's how's the support? I mean, you know, lately. Uh, probably for me, like the past seven years, I've been seeing a lot of the hashtag Philly support Philly. Right. Like how, like, like how's it been? I, you, with you and everything you do, I know you probably a lot of famous people or B list, A list celebrities in the city. Yeah. Probably see what you're doing. Like how's their support for you? I, I always people always love me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't really know of no really, really like people that not really digging what I'm doing mm -hmm. because I'm so genuine. Like yeah. I'm myself. Like I don't like I I get up I, I do I. Just put the work in. Yeah. And um, so I, I get a lot of love, man. Everywhere I go, I get love. And um, if the hate there, and I know it's there, it's, it's, it's so little, man, the, the, the love overshine it. So. Solid. Yeah. Solid. Well, we definitely appreciate you coming through. Yeah. Uh, we're going to hit up a couple more segments. We're just going to talk about a couple things that's going on. Yeah, yeah and we'd and we like you to stay for one of these segments if you got uh, time. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it for sure. That's it, man. Uh, yeah. We just want to laugh, man. So. You gotta have some jokes. Don't be serious all the time. Shit. Don't try to steal me. If you gotta punch a nigga, punch him. <laughs> but nigga, I don't, I block. If you need to laugh, nigga, I try to do it. If you need to laugh, laugh with me. If you need to punch a nigga, punch it. Uh -huh. No man, you gonna stop putting your fucking hands so close, nigga. This, yeah, you know we got the gloves right, right there. That fuck him up. No, we gonna wait till the camera's solid. Side. Mark and Craig, Pop Brothers at Law, we've been warning people, if you are working for an unlicensed dispensary, an illegal dispensary, and it gets raided, you need to shut the fuck up. If you shut the fuck up, you have a good, good chance that we can make the case go away. Case in point, three employees of an illegal shop were busted during a raid. Two of them said, oh, I'm just volunteering here. The third guy said, shut the fuck up. And the DA did not prosecute the guy who shut the fuck up. They can't prove what you were doing there if you're a customer. Oh, you you some good advice. go to the bathroom. They don't know. You got to shut the fuck the up, and it's shut the fuck up Friday. So review the script. The what do you say when the cop first pulls you over? Pull you over. And when he keeps asking <laughs> questions, I'm not discussing my day. And they ask more questions. Am I being detained or am I free to go? And if detained, what do you say? Shut the fuck up. Nothing. I vote the fifth. And then what do you do? Call my Shut lawyer. the fuck <laughs> up. Shut the Yo. fuck up Friday. You gotta send that video to Never. my phone. Answer questions when the cops say holidays. I need, holidays. I need that video. <laughs> Yo, I just want to be clear, right? Shut the fuck up Friday. Shut the fuck up yeah. and block <laughs> equals the same result. Yeah. You can't go to jail you don't say if you shit. shut the fuck up, you, don't say shit. you can't get beat up if you, if don't you say lie. Anything, yeah. Yo, <laughs> yo, that, that's fucking church tabernacle, man. Yeah. Yo, I, I, I don't have nothing to say. I agree 1,000%. When they locked me up, you know what I did? I went to sleep. You can't, <laughs> you can't ask me shit if I'm sleeping. I'm keeping it real. No eye twitches or nothing. Bro, them motherfuckers detained me for 18 hours. I slept for 17 hours and 30 minutes. Yeah. You just come over your eye like I'm still here. No, 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 no. They start asking me questions. Well, do I, well, do I, well, do I, well. <laughs> Next thing you know, you got you, you detain me or you gotta let me go, man. You have yeah. 18 hours. Y'all niggas can watch me sleep. That's what I'm saying. What the fuck? <laughs> Motherfuckers get in there and start singing like Luther yeah. Vandross. Once they get you to say the smallest thing, it's gonna open you up and you're gonna feel comfortable. And then they tell you what you say can yeah. be yeah. used against you in the court of law. They told you your Miranda rights and you still talk. Yeah. yeah, man, shut the fuck up Fridays. I like it. Well, whatever that grand is, let's follow it and see what other advice they give us on Fridays, man. That's how I feel. How, how, how you feel about that, Mr. Jackson? Uh, I'm with you 100%. Yeah, shut the fuck yeah. up, Friday. <laughs> yeah. So apparently, Genuine got a uh, lace front beard. Nah. I ain't, <laughs> so doing, I, ain't, I ain't doing like that. He look like he look like a 98 Philly nigga. He look like a Nah, I, I mean, the internet is saying it's not real. They show where you can actually get a lace front wig. Yeah, I seen that joint, yeah. Yeah, that joint is just right. I'm just being all the way real. I don't know what the fuck is on Genuine's mind, man. <laughs> Rick Ross and this beard gang shit just got niggas fucked up, man. Sometimes you just gotta be you. Yeah, definitely. That's very important, man. Yeah. You gotta be yourself, you, man. I don't know what's up with that. Do you think if you taught Genuine how to box, he wouldn't be walking around with fake beards? <laughs> 
It gotta be in you. It, ain't, it can't be on you. It gotta be in you. Oh, true. I just, you know, I don't like, know. He might be trying to get some genuine money. If you come to town, you're like, look, I need somewhere to work out. Self-esteem and character building. You would have <laughs> deficiency yeah. if you went and got yeah, a fake definitely. beard. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Yeah, 100%. man. Yeah, that's what you should put on the on on the window too. Malik Jackson, fitness boxing gym, character building and esteem de- and self esteem. That's a lot of letters and shit. That was long as shit. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> but it's investing it was in dope. itself. It, it you was get dope. the money back, though. It was dope. Because think we, about how many kids that get bullied. But the guy that like, comes out and does it is going to be per letter he's going to charge to yeah. put it on. Okay, it's only like $2. He's rich. These ain't, these ain't no motherfucking Creed boxing. Uh, boxing <laughs> I know. I did come in here. I did look like this. You punch that shit, you going to fuck around crack your knuckle. That's some real shit right there. <laughs> he can afford it. It's fucking Malik Jackson. Look at his fucking air This is some high property, high value property shit going Don't on. Don't believe right nothing these guys say. Bro, that's just $500 air max. <laughs> I seen him at the consignment shop. He ain't going to spend me, bro. And like, I, seen, I seen the customer that paid for it walking out, too. Who, you talking about fucking Bill Gates? <laughs> I still shop at Dollar General, man. Dollar General. Everybody know me know that. For what? Water? No. Sweats. Sneaks. Lies. They don't even sell sneaks in Dollar General. Not a pair. There Dollar General sneaks in my closet right there. One pair? No, that's the one pair I keep what here. What you got on fucking Balmain sweats? These ain't Balmain. Right. These <laughs> I paid three dollars for these. You gonna say, hey, it's cool, bro. It's cool, bro. You right. Malik Jackson's broke with his own gym. You know what? Yeah, right. It's tax time. No, That's shut the, the fuck up Friday. <laughs> <laughs> shut the fuck up Friday. Shut the fuck up Friday. I'm with it. I understand. <laughs> <laughs>I had to fuck us up, man. Don't bring me out with time. Nah, you been drinking, nigga. You don't want to get fucked up. That mean I'm a block better. This nigga don't want to get hit by a light skin, nigga. I'll keep it real. When you drunk, you are going to do two things better. Talk shit and get beat up. <laughs> or block. And shut the fuck up. I'm the... I'm the well, if this nigga swing, I'm blocking. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh, oh. Damn. Yo, that right hand is straight, Damn. though. Damn. Uh, now, now he got, now he got an orthodox. But at first, yeah. it was flying the right one. Yeah. She got hold of somebody. Yo, why back. is these bitch boys just watching? Yeah. She put that weight on. She more tough than Oh, she with the shit, <laughs> now. I love that shit. Yeah, I heard she used to be a boxer. <laughs> I heard she got back on that one. In the sport. What, yeah, t- t- taekwondo? No, a boxer. Who, her? Yeah. Boxing what, chicken in the snack box? No, boxing, boxing. Nah, I think they, She's a boxer. It was an uh, article that came out. She was yeah. actually a, a boxer. So why she start clubbing? Because she, she, the shit came out. Oh, she just, she, yeah. what Mike Tyson say, she, she, broke, she broke her technique. Remember Tyson said something like, uh, when he bit Holyfield, <laughs> what is that? The motherfucker was like, I'm going to tell you something, Malik, man, you know, Tyson was like a personal hero of mine, man. So I watched his like doc, his life documentary, and he was like, "Yeah, when I bit in the Holy Field, I was like a boxer that just broke away from all this training. I was like a soldier that that lost his. I was like a soldier that 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 uh that broke his broke away from his training, and when that happens, you're no longer a warrior, and that's why I retired from boxing." So I'm just asking, like, is that a moment right there where she like? That was some deep shit, Mike said. Yeah, I got, I got, I got to check that out. Look it up. It, it came out like maybe like 2008. Nas and Carmelo Anthony executive yeah. produced it. He had like a little documentary just talking about his life and shit. And he was talking about that moment right there when he bit his ear. He was like, he was just say he was just so enraged he just broke. All yeah, the all the rules. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's, and that's what led him to bite. Like, fuck it, I want to kill him. I don't know what she was doing, but. <laughs> she started off good, and she ended kind of, kind of good. But the guys that was around her, man. I don't. That that's where yeah, I'm discussing. The guys that was around her, man. Because if this was in the streets and that guy was black, they'd have jumped him. They did everything. all this bullshit. Yep. But because he was white, please stop. <laughs> no, bro. No, bro. If I well, that's that that's guy, good programming, man. They've been programming us for yeah, like hundreds Lynch, of years. Right? Huh? Willie Lynch. Like, listen, yeah. man. Ah, oh, fuck white boy up out of see him grab that girl like that. Anybody though, it don't. I don't think it, it's a race thing as far as what they should have done. Yeah. To him, it don't matter what color he was. Mm-hmm. It's like you put your hands on the female. Yeah. yeah. I mean, from a masculine, from a man standpoint. Yeah. If I see a female walking down the street, I'm from the streets. Oh, that might be a dude. Mind your business, but it's like 
the man, yo, you are. Right. I mean, if so he, it's like if he just give her <laughs> splash splash, I might just keep walking. But if he give her like yeah, if he if splash, he, splash splash, yeah, if he beat her ass, <laughs> kicks, yeah, oh chill out, chill. Yeah, like what you doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but he he was in the wrong. I think anybody that was in that situation, mm-hmm. especially the the other employees. They should have did something to him. Yeah, I hate bitch ass shit. Like should, yeah, they should have did something. The worst part about it on the video, they don't, we ain't sure we're here, but the uh, the manager came and finished serving him. The, the, he never went. He never left. No, he stayed right there for his snack. He box. did wind up getting arrested though. Okay, but the, who called the police? He should have he, he, he went to the hospital before he got <laughs> That's arrested. Right. That's right, and, and let the girl shut the fuck up Fridays. Yeah, what happened? I don't know. I just served him some chicken. Yeah, that shit crazy, man. I, I look at them two dudes in the video a different way. Like he, the motherfucker reached over and grabbed her shirt before she ever swung a punch. He really yeah. is, like yeah. you watch that happen. Yeah, bro, that's disgusting, bro. All right, so at this time we like to thank Mr. Malik Jackson for coming out to the uh, So Unprofessional show. Appreciate yeah, you, thanks bro. Thanks for having me, man. You know really what I'm saying? Definitely had some good laughter. Uh, for all the people that's watching, give them all your social media handles. How can they spend money with you? How can they support you? How can you help them get more fit in what they're doing? Um, you can head over to our website. Our website is um, mjfitnessboxing.com. Mm-hmm. And all my social media is run. My name is just Malik, Jack- Malik Jackson. There's an underscore in there, right? Yeah, Malik underscore Jackson. Yeah, you don't want to get the fake one. Yeah. Sure. He's trying to correct him. If he <laughs> want to make sure they want the right one. When the police come, it's Friday. You ain't gonna help me. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. You ain't gonna help me. You ain't gonna help me. <laughs> don't see <laughs> nothing Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Also, we like to thank everybody for tuning in to this episode. Um, if you're in the Philadelphia area, please come out um, on the 19th and party with my frat bros, man. Shout out to all this my frat bros. This ain't a commercial, bro. Shut up, bitch. Shout out to all my frat bros. Oh, we Jim definitely did that ring, Over 100 years of achievement for Cap Alpha Sava Turner Incorporated. Fucking hand rubbing. Once shit again, shit. thank <laughs> Mr. Malik Jackson. Next week, we won't have Gus. <laughs> and it'll be Friday, so I can't tell you what happened to him. Yo, man, make right. sure y'all, y'all check us out. <laughs> Or oh, So Unprofessional Show on Instagram. That's right. Make sure you check us out at SoUnprofessional.com. That's right. Make sure you check out the podcast, yeah. Stay Talking Ish. Yep. Make sure you check out the radio show, Stay Talking Ish. Radio show on mm-hmm. Big Bad Radio. Mm-hmm. We got some more shit, too. Yeah, shout out to the brown girl. Couldn't be here. Shout out to TK, the whole Stay Talking Ish team. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Ish underscore Barstow 1911. Man. Don't follow Gus, his page is ass. Make sure, you follow, <laughs> make sure you follow Malik Jackson. Get yourself together. And that's it, man. Peace. Peace. But he paid for them. <laughs> he, paid, he paid the parents. He paid the parents, bro. Dog. That nigga watched too much Game of Thrones and shit. He like, he paid for them. I'm just saying, but if I had a, if I had a daughter, I'm not going on Lifetime to complain about what R. Kelly talked. That's what I'm saying. I was on Lifetime. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm, going to, I'm not going to take your 200000 and be like, all right, it's cool you fucked my daughter. And then now I'm complaining 20 years later. You, you ain't had heard, a good lawyer. You ain't heard that little girl come out and talk about nothing. The one he peed on? Yeah. She ain't talked about nothing. No, I no, no. It's, it, R. Kelly said that wasn't him on the video. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He paid a non-disclosure. <laughs> that wasn't me. That wasn't him. No. It, was, it wasn't me. Cool.